I know you want me to tell my story. You want me to tell how I was trafficked. You hear stories from back home about people coming to America. They say really sweet and nice things. But when you get here, everything is different than what they said. I first came to this country through the help of a friend who promised to help me. But unfortunately, that was not the case. My name is Wendy. My name is Yasmin. I'm Serena, and I'm a social worker. I work for an NGO. I work at a shelter for trafficked women. It's a non-governmental organization that advocates on behalf of the victims of human trafficking. I'm a vice detective in Southern California, meaning that my job focuses primarily on narcotics and prostitution. I work at Vice on the streets, and um, my personal opinion is that uh, prostitution is never voluntary. A cop sees a 16-year-old prostituting on the street, and the law says, by definition, under the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, that she is a victim of trafficking. Some of uh, these victims, they know they're coming here to prostitute, but not to the degree. So the cop arrests her. We arrest these girls, we put them in jail. And he arrests her so that we can help her. And we are the best friends they have. We don't take advantage of them. We uh, don't force them to, to, to sell their bodies for money. We don't beat them. We actually try to find assistance for them. If I'm a 16 year old and you're arresting me, I don't think that you're trying to help me. The very hardest thing for me was having to go to court. They always want all of the details about how I was forced to come here and want me to tell the bad things that happened to me. The juries are really moved by the testimonies of some of these victims, but I don't want to talk about it. These are young girls, young women, who have been held against their will for two years, beaten, raped, raped by their trafficker, forced to have sex with all these men. How could they possibly sit there and tell their story? I have seen women that have come out of sex trafficking that had panic attacks when in a room with five or more people. I can't sleep well anymore. My uh, case manager says it's because of all the, the life changes. I have seen other women have panic attacks because of the cultural manipulation of the trafficker into believing that you are utterly worthless and you have brought this entire situation upon yourself. Even though I know and I have been told over and over that it is not my fault, I still blame myself and feel ashamed that I did not know better. From the perspective of law enforcement, we can't care for the victims. Not that we don't care, we can't. We don't have the resources. The social worker tried to uh, help us, but they don't always know what to do. We can talk, we can comfort, but we can't deliver anything other than that. So you have to have the service provider there, and you have to have the federal there too, because they have the expertise. There's uh, ignorance everywhere with the government, with the police. It's easier for people to understand sex trafficking. People talk about different forms of trafficking, but labor trafficking is really not being studied. When it comes to the whole forced labor issue, it's harder because we're consumers. California has a huge illegal alien population, so we're seeing a lot of labor trafficking. From the very onset, everybody agreed that the vast majority of cases we were probably going to be coming across would be cases involving sex. I was forced to work in the trafficker's house for two years and look after their children. We're constantly looking for that big factory where we're gonna find, you know, 20 people from Thailand, but as of yet, that hasn't been the case. I think the division within the anti-trafficking movement and the lack of willingness to overcome and set aside some of the differences are a challenge. What's frustrating is the absoluteness that I see on both sides. There's no middle ground and you have to be all or nothing. What I want to talk about is what people have done for me and how they have helped. You would think that once someone's free of their trafficking situation, that they'd begin to feel freedom, but that's not yet the case. After we leave the shelter, 
People like me still need help. They're still very scared. I mean, they don't know if they can trust anyone in the United States. They don't know what's going to happen to them next. People in the USA feel better in thinking that they are helping survivors of trafficking rather than hurting them. But sometimes we are hurt here. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen these quotes from these senators that are like, today this victim of trafficking went to Disneyland for the first time and it was the best experience of her life. It's like they hurt you in this country and then they want to take you to Disneyland. I try to be honest with clients. Um, I don't want to be put in that position where I'm putting out s some sort of false empathy. There is a social worker who told us to talk to her about our feeling, but she didn't have the gift. She is one of the last people I would want to talk to about my problems. When clients come up to me and tell me of their experiences, of their fear and all the dynamics that go along with human trafficking, I tell them, I don't know what you're going through. I don't, but uh, please help me understand so that I can better help you. It's also when they start seeing doctors and professionals to help them deal with the, the physical and, and psychological violences that they endured while enslaved. Sometimes I wonder if the traffickers really know what they have done. Because for people who have been in a situation like why, it, it feels like we're dying. This is where they start to learn English and where they begin the legal process to gain the immigration status that they're entitled to. People like me need help in getting our green cards, finding safe places to live, money for school, good jobs. This is my cry and my hope for us.